Good morning, traders. Welcome to Monday of this beautiful week. Make sure to swing over to ssftg.com slash brief to grab your morning brief levels. Before we jump on in, as always, we need to check the news, see what's going on, when it's going on, etc., so that we're not taken by surprise by anything, and then we can jump into some charts. Looking at the news calendar for today, we do have some decent announcements coming out. First one at 9 o'clock, that's going to be Fed Chair Powell speaking. That usually always throws the markets around. We also have 10 o'clock existing home sales for February, forecasted 6.49 million. Uh, but that's about it. So there's not a ton of news, but the news that is coming out today does tend to have or is likely to have a relatively large impact. So with the news mostly out of the way, now we can jump into some charts for today. Today being uh, 322 of 2021, and we're finally past quad witching, uh, which was last week. So now there's, you know, hopefully some semblance of, uh, of reliability back in the markets again. So first up to the list is the NASDAQ. And the big thing that we are kind of seeing here is that there aren't really a whole lot of larger patterns going on because we consistently are making higher highs and lower lows. It just keeps going both ways. Now, obviously that would give us a megaphone, but the market isn't really expanding out to any of the megaphones. This top was missed. There wasn't really a low down there. And if we expand over here, uh, that's... It, well, that one was too shallow. But if we go over here, uh, we had that maybe bounce, but it's it's very early. So there's still a lot of questions going on as far as the NASDAQ is concerned. There's an ascending wedge that's trying to work its way higher. We've got the overall settlement price below us. And it does appear as though the market put in some pretty wicked bottoming going on down there uh, with some monstrous divergence on the MACD. I mean, normally you see like a divergence that has a, the, you know, the lows that are relatively close. <laughs> but, but that one just got left in the dust. That may just be a clue that there's going to be a larger pullback to come. Uh, and that would be a perfect spot for a higher low, a trap, dig down into those 12,800s, and then rocket the thing right back up towards the highs again. Then next up, we've got the S&P, which is in kind of a funky little wedge. And the reason I have it drawn this way is mainly because that's the best fit. Uh, this little swing low that formed inside of there, right? So trying to draw it off of this low, that, that didn't really fit anything. It's kind of cutting through. And I mean, sure, the closes are above it, but there's still that big wick underneath. So I was trying to locate something that made a bit more visual sense. And that next inside low is, is nearly perfect uh, for now. Now, again, depending on the candle formation, that come up this more aggressive one may still be favorable you can see here we're actually plotting some pretty good candle support off of that so that you know slightly more aggressive one may be the case but as of right now we're still going pretty sideways range bound we're hanging out on top of settlement uh, the market is making higher highs and so far higher lows uh, as long as it can make another leg up but it's very very range bound inside of here and we're gonna have to start breaking out of this uh, to get things going then over on the gold market with a relatively decent bullish channel, or actually it's it's technically a wedge if you zoom out far enough, but uh, it's basically a channel at this point. Uh, the big thing that's standing out here is that the market has made some pretty good previous breakout highs, right? The first time around wasn't so great, kind of fell short underneath that, if anything, kind of looked like maybe an inside swing high. Uh, but once it finally rifled above it, that was the shot that buyers had to try to take this thing up. And, well, it, they didn't. It, it didn't work. And the market fell right back below. It looked as though sellers were going to try to hold it down. Then it popped back above it. So buyers were trying to get this thing to go back up and up and up and up. And now we're back down underneath it again. So you can see this is kind of an area where I either buyers are looking at this as a massive value play, thinking, hey, anything down here, generally speaking, tends to be pretty good value and it, it wants to bounce back higher. Or we're in a situation where the buyers just failed and this is starting to gear up for another really strong leg to the downside. And that could be meeting up with some of these previous wedge lows down in the 1705s or so, depending on how far this wants to go. Over on crude oil, after it's after they laid waste to the buyers on the way down, the big thing that we have going on here is zoomed out. We've got a pretty obvious zone of support that the market's trying to bounce off of. And the last time that it failed through, well, it bounced right back up and held the support again. And now it's off to the races trying to get going back up. 
the big, I mean, the big question now is, was this big move down just the precursor to a V bottom? Was this just to get some major swing lows, some major traps? It kind of seems that way, you know, on the, on the larger time frame, we were talking about 61 being the major zone of interest. Obviously that went down quite a bit, but realistically, given the fact that they haven't expanded any support down at 61, it's, it's just sort of like they overextended themselves. It's just, it overextended itself down into the 58s before it finally found that bottom. And that might be why it's going sideways for so long here, because buyers just have to reposition. This went a lot further by dollars, uh, further than traders were expecting. And now they're anticipating that bullish bounce back up. We're back in the zone where earlier buyers who were stuck on this move lower, have been able to get out of break even. So the question now is, is this just going to roll back over and start this stronger bear trend down? Or is this actually the low? And we do continue our way back up. Uh, I know at least for gas prices, I'd prefer it to go back down again. But, you know, hey, we'll have to wait and see what the chart tells us. On the euro next, we've got a that still <laughs> just an absolutely vicious lower high with those bear bars on top. What an... <laughs> What a decimation on the top there at 1.2. Now that they've rolled over, we've got the good wedge to the downside. Although the wedge low isn't the best looking thing in the world, I have it set as this, primarily because if we draw across the lows, those were the two largest lows. The market broke out underneath it, but when it came back, it held the support, held the support. I've got a reason to believe that there's at least something there. Is this the wedge that we're going to land on in the end? Probably not. Realistically, we're likely going to land on something over here. It just hasn't really confirmed anything like that. Uh, so as it stands, the only real level that we have to work with is its falling resistance. And it looks like it's the start of an avalanche wedge that br that's breaking out right now. A higher low or a reversal point a nice test of that L5 down there, that would be the fantastic point of interest for buyers to try to rotate this back up again. Taking a look next at Bitcoin with a kind of an arbitrary out there wedge, really the big thing, it's just consolidated. We're seeing a lot of sideways action. And if we zoom really far out, we can see what's going on. Regardless of whether or not the wedge is actually here or not, the, the one part of this wedge that I do like as a side note is this three press wedge low potential. That's the hot spot that I'm looking for because it lines up with 55,000. It lines up with previous major support. Everything else is absolutely perfect down here. I don't so much care about the top. The top can do whatever it wants to do, to be honest. I really don't care. The part that I'm interested in more so is getting back down here towards these 55,000s get those value plays going, get the three press wedge bottoms. That's where things get a lot more interesting. Uh, from a rising wedge support, we can see what's going on here. Buyers really tried defending this area very weakly. It broke down. They found a higher low, uh, well, I guess, uh, support area reversed back up, but then kind of chopped out underneath it again. This low is obviously not the best spot right now, and I think we're just gunning for a slightly wider zone of interest and what better spot than that dip down to the 55 thousands man that's juicy and then probably the nicest structurally looking uh out of all of them today is ethereum with this really beautiful looking wedge i mean it's hard to get much better than this uh, as far as a wedge perspective goes it's setting up perfectly uh the highs are working out perfectly the lows are relatively untested yet but visually it's it's really nice uh, we do have some pretty big caveats going on here in that we had this major low reversed up, tried driving down, immediately failed. And that gives us that inside swing point of interest. That becomes the gigantic line in the sand. When the market comes back, it holds, it holds, didn't test it, but basically holds. Physical test holds, again, didn't test it, but basically, didn't test it, but basically. What we're missing here is another quick little dip back down here. Uh, and that would fit almost perfectly for a diverged low if it happens quickly, like a, a little flush, and then a move back up would offer up a huge opportunity for buyers to be buying on value again, trying to buy the lowest point of, of interest with very small risk. Whereas the reward is incredibly high, all the way back up potentially towards the 19, 1900 area. Alrighty, well that's going to do it for today. Like we always say, stay safe out there. Keep those stops in play, and let the winners run. Until the next time, we'll talk to you all then. Thanks.